Hey folks, my name is Pilot Light, and I'm going to be walking us through a Lost Halls and Cultist Tata today. I'm going to be running this solo uh, using a Sorcerer with Snidario Rod and a Scepter of Devastation. I uh, highly recommend this class for doing this solo, but pretty much any class can solo Lost Halls. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pop now, uh, and I will be taking a minute to sort of just explain what we're doing as we go through, so if you don't have a ton of Halls experience, um, that's good. I can I can teach you some of that. I'm going to be talking about the four different types of enemies, the the map layout, um, and just generally what you should be doing in halls. It's a pretty safe dungeon. It is an end game dungeon though. Um, so first off, when you enter the halls, you're going to end up in one of these square rooms. It's going to have one or more of these little pillars here. We've only got one here, so we're just going to go ahead and get close to it so that it becomes vulnerable and then break it. Um, we're going to switch to the Snidaria rod here, uh, and we're going to talk. Uh, we've got a golem room here, so we're going to have these little golem guys. There are four types of rooms, as I said, typically. Uh, golem is one of them. There's a big golem in the middle. He's going to chase you down until you push him back. Uh, and then he's going to stay in the middle of the room until uh, you damage him enough to uh, have him chase you again. Uh, he goes through periods where uh, you see he's taking like 30 damage per shot. He has very high armor, but then will occasionally have armor break uh, status on him. Um, it's pretty regular, so just try to time all your burst damage to line up with that. Um, and the reason I'm using the Snidaria Rod here is because it hits a ton of targets, as you can see, and the damage increases for each target you hit. Uh, Lost Halls is a pretty dense dungeon. You don't need this weapon to, um, to clear it, but it does help a lot. Um, uh, so I'm gonna, I'll do a couple rooms without it just to show you. Uh, the difference in clear speed. Uh, it, it does make the clear very fast though. Um, so I'll talk about that room that I just cleared in a second when we get another one. Ah, here we go. Um, so that's an Oryx room. This little guy, they call him Mario's if you go on the server because he's got the little overall and red hat. I always thought of him as Prospector, but um, if you hear Mario, that's what they're talking about. He does shoot confused shots, those purple shots. Uh, so you want to watch out for those. Uh, so I'm going to be using my Scepter Devastation. So how you deal with these Oryx rooms is he's got these guys that are circling around, and sometimes they'll get stuck on, on terrain, like you saw those couple of guys stuck at the edge of the pit up there. Uh, once you kill all those guys circling around, you're going to fight the leader. Uh, the leader won't take damage until you've killed all the little guys. Uh, if you're ranged, you can just kite him back like that and blast him. Uh, if you are melee, you're going to want to circle around him. Um, so those are two of the rooms, the Oryx Henchman and the... Uh, other, uh, the golem room. Uh, and what we're trying to find here as we're going towards cultist hideout is these pot rooms. Um, so what we're going to do, we're just going to blast these pots up and that's the power of the Snidaria rod right there that just completely destroyed the entire room in a second. Um, usually get some potions from it, but additionally, uh, you saw those little pink guys that popped out. Uh, one of them's going to head up on the mini map, uh, to the agonized Titan, which is what we're trying to get to. Uh, Lost Halls is fairly unique in that it has two bosses, um, the Agonized Titan and then the Marble Colossus and Marble Defender, uh, and each of those will take you to a different boss room. Okay, we've got another uh, Oryx room here. I'm not going to bother explaining it, but I will say, uh, like I said, you want to watch out for those confused shots. Uh, see, I just tanked one of those to show you. Um, it doesn't last super long, but you just have to be careful of them. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll just see how much faster this clear is as I'm using the Snidaria Rod instead of the uh, Scepter of Devastation. I cleared that whole room in a few seconds. Um, okay, now we've got a Slime Room here. Um, slime Room is going to have these little rats and bats. Uh, you're going to want to watch out for the things that they drop behind because they'll get Pet Stasis or Quiet, both of which suck. And what sucks even more is if you have an electric pet like I do, uh, you can paralyze them, and they're going to keep dropping those little things where they are. So if I were to walk over that right now, it would be like five stop, uh, shots stacked on top of each other and probably either kill me or get really close to. Uh, so make sure you're not stepping over those when you can. Um, so the slime room, the reason it's called a slime room is because it's got this big slime in the middle. Uh, at two-thirds and one-thirds health, it's going to become invulnerable briefly and spawn three of those little slimes to, that'll chase after you. Uh, do not underestimate these little slimes. They shoot shots pretty quickly, and they each deal a good amount of damage. That's on 30 base. I'm sitting at 50 defense here. Um, I've seen a lot of people die to grotto slimes. Um, so generally speaking, as we're clearing, uh, we want to keep clearing towards this uh, Agonized Titan. Once you get your first uh, pot, you're going to see the Agonized Titan appear on the minimap, and you're going to want to move towards it. Uh, the room that I just peeked and why I'm sprinting backwards is uh, Crusader room uh and 
they will chase you to the ends of earth and there's just a bunch of them. Uh, it's not that bad if you're using a Cinedaria rod, you can clear them out pretty easily. You're just gonna wanna kite them back and blast them. Um, if you're a shorter range class, they can be very deadly um, and they will chase you sort of as soon as you see them. Uh, so if you're in a Lost Halls with a group of people and someone like peeks this room while everyone else is clearing this room over here, uh, then it's gonna start chasing everyone and uh, just like, has a potential to just full on wipe and ruin the run. So be careful if you're going in a group uh, not to peek rooms because the cultists will uh, will chase you around. Um, and uh, you'll usually type in chat a quick little C if you find a cultist, or sorry, crusader, not cultist. Um, if you find the crusaders, like, see, I just, I barely looked at that room and these crusaders are chasing me down over here. Um, but yeah, let me just show you what it looks like clearing it without a Snidaria rod. It's, it's not too much slower uh, as a wand class because I have the piercing. Um, but it definitely isn't as quick, right? So I kill him, and then we're gonna have all these remnants I left behind because I didn't blast him with the Snidaria rod. So you have to be a little bit careful as you backtrack up towards uh, where you just cleared out. Um, yeah, so uh, just a little tip on map reading in the Lost Halls. Pots, those pot rooms that we found, we need three of those in order to activate the Agonized Titan, uh, and they're only going to appear at the end of a dead end path. Uh, dead end paths are either two or three rooms long, so if we look at the last branch I took, I'm, this is the second room, so there might be a pot after this room. Um, if there's not, then I'm going to be on the main path. The main path will always have splits. Uh, if you find a split, you're on the main path and not a dead end, so no splits. I could be on the pot room. Yep, there we go. So third room on the dead end is a pot room. Um, so I'm just going to blast that, grab all the little potions, kill these guys. Uh, they will petrify you if you tank them. They're not particularly dangerous, but uh, just something to be aware of. Um, so again, I need to find three pot rooms uh, to get three little pink dots up there and then head up there to fight the boss. Um, now I'm guessing that this upward path is the main path and that there's a couple more dead ends on the bottom path uh, because the agonized Titan again is always on a dead end off of the main path, uh, just like a pot room. So I'm gonna go ahead, I already cleared this room. So there's only either one or two more rooms over here for another pot and there we go. There's the pot right there. Uh, whoops, I switched to a scepter of devastation. Uh, so it's gonna take a little longer to clear, that's okay. Um, okay, so now once I've cleared all three pot rooms, oh, looks like there's still some more pots over here. Um, you're going to see the Agonized Titan say, I, um, and that means he's going to become active in one minute. If you haven't cleared three pot rooms and you get to the Agonized Titan first, he's not going to be active when you get to him, um, and you're going to have to go back and clear three pot rooms. He won't hurt you in any means, uh, but you also won't be able to fight him yet. Um, so I'm going to start heading up there, and while I do, uh, I'm going to just talk about uh, the other rooms that I haven't entered. Uh, there is, occasionally you'll find what we call Spooky, the Spectral Sentry. Uh, it's gonna be left to the boss, I think. Uh, oh, here we go, Spooky, cool. Uh, I was gonna just describe it. Uh, it's a pretty rare room, you don't see it super often, but this guy's just gonna chase me around uh, for a long time. I'm just gonna keep walking away through rooms that I've already cleared. Um, and uh, he's gonna, okay, so then he stops and he's gonna teleport over to another player, which since I'm the only one in this dungeon, he's always gonna teleport to me. Um, and then if I ever hit a dead end, what you gotta do is you wanna take a long path around the outside of the room to drag him around the walls, and then you can very safely just walk back the way you came. Uh, and then he's gonna teleport again, there we go. He teleports three times in total before he disappears. You cannot hurt this guy at all, so don't even bother blasting him. Make sure you're watching, walking, watching out for water or holes or any other hazards that will slow you down and make it more likely for you to get killed by this guy. Um, but for the most part, you just kind of run around and uh, just dodge his shots until he disappears, which will be right now. You get seven fame. Um, uh, yeah, there's usually only one of those. It's a pretty uncommon room. You don't usually even run into it as you're clearing for a Lost Halls. Um, so I'm, I'm actually kind of pleasantly surprised I got one so I could show you what I was talking about. Um, and those are the five rooms. So you've got the Crusaders, the uh, Golems, the Slime Rooms, the uh, Oryx Henchmen, and then the Spookies. You've got Pot Rooms at the end of Dead Ends, Agonized Titan at the end of Dead Ends. We're going to kill the Agonized Titan. This is a very easy boss fight. If you're ranged, you can just stand right here and weave in and out. Do not tank these shots. They do a ton of damage. Um, I just tanked one to show you what I was talking about. Um, the and as you saw, 252 damage. Uh, try to avoid uh, getting hit by those pink guys when they come out, which is right around 20 or 40% health. Uh, and they'll keep spawning after that, so try to kill them as fast as possible after he spawns those. And dodge the, um, the little colored shots he shoots out in rings. 
uh, because those will apply status effects. Um, if you're in a group or uh, you're melee and you want to be confident and you can rotate around with him, uh, it's a lot harder to dodge the rings of uh, colored shots, though, when you're doing that. Um, and then I guess just a couple other quick Lost Hall tips before I head into the Cultist Hideout. Um, this won't disappear ever, by the way, this Cultist Hideout portal. It just stays up forever. Um, but yeah, uh, other Cultist Hideout tips, or Lost, Lost Hall tips, uh, you can go through all of the rooms. Once you follow the main path far enough, um, you will get to a uh, the Marble Defender and then the Marble Colossus. That boss is much, much harder than the bosses in the Cultist Hideout. Um, so I don't recommend soloing them. Uh, this boss you can solo with pretty much anything. Uh, and if you're wondering how to get this Snidaria rod, you can always buy the blueprint from uh, the uh, the store. I can show you that at the very end after I clear this uh, and, and head back to Nexus. But uh, yeah, so you're going to head into the Cultist hideout. Um, I like to use the Rod of Scepter of Devastation here because there's not as many enemies in this. And uh, you can't really see it. I'm going to zoom out a little bit more so you can. Um, but the enemies here are all uh, invulnerable until you get into close enough range. So see how that yellow guy just isn't moving? Um, so Snidari Rod doesn't get as much benefit of bouncing off of enemies that you can't really see. Uh, I'm going to zoom back in just because I, I'm more comfortable playing that way. Um, I suck at dodging at full zoom out. Um, but yeah, so there's occasionally going to be splits, like you see right here in this path. It's very easy to tell which path is the main path. So when you see this split, you're going to want to stay away from the one that has the bar over the top of it. That's always a dead end. I'm just going to kill this guy because I activated him. Uh, but he will go back to being inactive if I started running up here. Um, so yeah, it's going to take a couple minutes to clear this, uh, this path out and head to the boss. It usually takes about two minutes to solo clear this... Um, not terribly difficult, not terribly dangerous, but you just want to kind of move up to activate them and then just kite them back and blast them until they die. Um, so again, another split. I want to take the path that doesn't have the bar over it there. Um, and I think this is going to be one more split if I had to guess. Um, if you get tagged up by these slows, just keep running backwards and blast anything that's actively hitting you. Uh, it can be dangerous and scary, but it's not too bad. Um, but if you get a bunch of these guys on you at once, then you, you could potentially die. Um, so see, there were like four or five splits here, and none of them hurt me. Or, and none of them were, were right, the ones that had the bar over the top. Uh, to activate the cult, you're going to walk in. Just walk right over this pentagram. They won't blast you. Um, this is a pretty easy boss fight. Um, it's, it's hard to get killed in here. I've definitely died once or twice, but um, once you know what you're doing, it's a pretty easy fight. Um... So first off, these five cultists are going to become active and start blasting shotguns at you like this. Uh, you just want to run around and do enough damage to them to force them back into the middle. Uh, and again, I'm still using my uh, Scepter of Devastation. It's just higher damage in this phase. Uh, so now once you've done that, he's going to spawn this uh, little red guy here in the middle. They're going to disappear off the map, the cultists, and this red dude is going to come out and start blasting you. Uh, watch out for the fires that he throws on the ground. Those armor break you, uh, and so do their shots. Uh, he has like, I don't know, three or four patterns. They're all pretty telegraphed. This one, he chases you around. There's a couple where he runs in a circle. He spawns some little dudes. Uh, and then there's this one where he fires the blast from the middle and shoots out these. Those blasts from the middle do a lot of damage, but it's hard to tank more than one of them. Um, so just wanted to show you that. Uh, all right, so this guy's gonna die. Then we're gonna go back to the cultists. They're gonna respawn. This time, all their shots are gonna fire three shotguns. Uh, so you just keep blasting them and they're gonna go back into the middle again. Uh, they do apply different status effects. White makes you quiet. The yellow paralyzes you, so watch out for those. Um, the blues slow you down. The reds armor break, and the purple unstables you. Uh, they're pretty easy to dodge, but if you're having trouble, you can always hide in the back behind one of these corners, and you're almost never going to get hit unless they teleport to like a weird spot where they're perfectly lined up to hit you. Um, okay, so now that I've pushed all these guys back again, he's going to spawn, I don't know, it's like Balam or something, uh, the three-headed monster. Uh, you're just going to blast this guy. He has three different attacks. These shots darkness you. Uh, they're very easy to dodge. Um, once you get him down, uh, he shoots the blues. Uh, once you get him down, he uh, will split into three enemies. Uh, you want to really watch out for these red shots here and not eat any of those because they do tons of damage, as you just saw. Um, the blues don't do as much, but they are armor piercing, so keep that in mind. And then these 
uh, green shots do darken you. Uh, very easy to safe spot them, but while you're running away from the other guys, you might tank one or two, uh, which is fine. Uh, and again, in that phase, you can hide behind the corners again to uh, to avoid getting chased. The uh, the guys that chase you will leash before they can get into the corners, so it's very safe to dodge uh, to hide in the corners there. Um, and now this last phase, they all shoot five shotguns. Uh, once we kill these guys, up, oh, took some quiet shots there. That's fine. Um, once we kill these guys and force them back into the middle, uh, we are going to move on to the final phase of the boss fight. Um, and again, this this phase isn't super difficult, but if you're if you're having trouble, you can always hide in the corner here. Um, especially as a melee character, it can be tough to find your openings uh, if you're not a knight. These guys are vulnerable to stun, so if you are a knight, it's very safe to just go up right next to them before they shoot and then blast them um, with your stun ability so that they can't shoot you back. Um, all right, uh, and then we've just got this blue guy left, and once we kill him, beautiful. Okay, so we're gonna move into the next phase, and this phase, what you want to do, you want to stand like right here in the hexagon, um, so you can get your fame, and then you back out once Malice, uh, health bar starts coming up. You're gonna try to kill Malice next. Uh, he's gonna spawn these little circles, uh, uh, the minions that you fought on the way in here. You want to kill these guys first so you're not distracted by them. Uh, they're gonna respawn every 30 seconds or so. Uh, in between that, you're just gonna blast him. Uh, he has a bunch of different phases that have various effects. Uh, so that one, as you saw, was just slow. The purple one he did before was uh, unstables. This is quiet, so you really wanna dodge those if you use your ability for damage. Um, uh, this is armor breaks, the red blasts. Uh, and very soon, around half health, he's going to say, Azimoth will protect me. And this is what we call a shapes phase where he shoots blasts very similar to uh, the guys that he was spawning. Uh, these are not super dangerous, especially the blue, red, white, uh, because they're not directional at all. He just fires out in circles like that. Um, so you can dodge them very easily if you're ranged. You can even safe spot some of them. White is a very easy safe spot. Uh, here we go, here's white. See, uh, I don't even have to dodge. Very easy to save spot. Yellow and purple are both directional, so you're gonna have to kite those a little bit. Uh, and then once you get him down to about 10% health, I don't know what that is, he can, he's gonna go in the middle. So you wanna kill all of his minions now as soon as he's gone into the middle. He's gonna fire five blasts, so pur uh, red, purple, uh, yellow, uh, blue, white, and then he becomes vulnerable. You wanna blast him and try to kill him before he does it again. If it's so low, it can be tough. Uh, the minions will keep spawning here, so make sure you kill these minions as you're spawning. Um, and there we go, white bag, nice ritual robe, uh, let's grab that, and I'm gonna have to Nexus, whoops. Uh, yeah, so you wanna make sure you kill those minions before they, um, before you kill the bag, or before they spawn the bag if you can. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that currently there's an event going on that spawns uh, a, a finale boss, so I was a little scared of the finale boss coming and just blasting me. Um, otherwise, I would have stayed in there to kill the minions. Uh, fortunately, I still got the ritual robe, which is nice. Uh, and then, yeah, just real quick, I want to show you in the shop where you can get the Snidaria rod blueprint. Um, it's going to be over here under Forge. Um, and then you want to just scroll over, get out of the gold section. You don't want to pay real money for this bullshit. Uh, you want to grab, uh, it's one of these uh, Paramount blueprints. Uh, there's Scepter of Devastation, which is also very good, what the other one I was using. Uh, that's your bossing uh, wand, uh, sorry, bossing scepter. Um, Snidaria Rod is in here somewhere, I promise you. I haven't looked at it before this, I didn't even. Uh, there we go. So it'll cost you 6,825 fame. Then once you get it, it's a um, uh, 30, 40 item. So you're gonna need three equivalent items to forge it. Uh, you don't need any marks or anything to forge it though, very easy. Um, and you know, if I had picked up my loot, I would have got another four or so uh, life and health potions, which is pretty nice too. Um, so that's it for the uh, the cultist run. Uh, apologies for having the nexus at the end there, but uh, you know, I I like keeping my characters. I don't want another slot. So um, yeah, uh, if you have any feedback or other things I forgot to mention, feel free to put that in the comments. Uh, and best of luck if you're just trying your first lost halls, your first cult run. Um, I promise you it's not that bad. I promise you you can do it.